should come up on the screen any second. I've got to mute myself because I always have it on like a dual screen so that I can see if it's working. Cool. Totally. Yeah. We are on. Yeah. Perfect. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. It's um an honor and I think it's taken us a bit of time to get to this point. I think uh, it's been an idea of mine for a while. Um, so I thought this evening, whoever is listening at this point, um, we would kind of, actually it's afternoon for you guys, isn't it? So this okay. evening, this afternoon, this morning, um, we kind of come together with some people that I follow on my Instagram um, and admire what they're up to um, and kind of bring you a full range of millennial preneurship um so to speak and uh with myself into very practical business you know old school you know build an asset expand the asset we've got some trading people we've got um some speakers and i thought it'd be a very very interesting conversation for us to to kind of go through um their stories their backgrounds and what they want to do with their careers so i called this business investing and careers so i thought you know what, let's start and get a bit of an intro from each of our guests on those three subjects and then we can kind of see where the conversation goes who wants to go first boys yeah matt if you want to if you want to take it away for sure for sure first and foremost josh i want to say that i'm grateful for the for the opportunity to be here with you and evan you as well man you know i'm definitely grateful for any opportunity where i can connect with like-minded individuals like yourself so thank you for that uh, brief introduction. My name is Matt Labrie, 26 year old New York City, born and raised kid. Uh, caught the hustler spirit. It's almost inevitable to not catch it when you're, you know, on these streets here in New York City. But um, for the past two and a half years, I've worked with Damon John of Shark Tank. Anyone that's tuned in from the UK right now, the more familiar Shark Tank is probably Dragons. Then, right, Josh? I'm I'm pretty sure that's yeah, pretty much yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, cool. So. Uh, Damon John, I've been working with him for the past two and a half years, founder of FUBU, absolutely amazing guy. I manage all of his content, whether that's digital media, uh, right behind me, project managed this book called Rise and Grind, which was a New York Times bestseller, and that's exactly how I met Josh. Uh, as Josh men mentioned, I'm also a speaker. I've been traveling the country, trying to go international with it. Uh, you know, I've only been on the speaker circuit for about a year and a half, but uh, tremendous strides, and uh, definitely helps me to achieve the goal, which I set out for myself of impacting the lives of 1 billion people. So that is me, man. And that's me in a nutshell. Love that. I like the uh, billion people thing. That's a cool, that's a cool statement to make. Yeah, for sure. Matt, awesome. that's epic. I know we haven't gotten to talk too much, but um, yeah, no, I definitely respect everything that you're doing. I love, I love doing this type of stuff like podcasts and speaking on stage. I mean, I've only been in, um, so I guess my, my introduction would just be, you know, I grew up in, in Colorado. I, um, grew up in kind of like a middle class family had you know just like kind of like a humble beginning and stuff like that but you know my dad always instilled like a good work ethic in me and so like i really believe that you know like whatever i do i just i just go all in on it and i was just taught just to work hard and and just serve other people man and so i've actually only been in um entrepreneurship for the last two years i think i got introduced um two years ago when i was 20 years old and uh, i was actually knocking on doors and that's actually how i got started i was selling solar panels um, door to door, and then uh, one thing just led to another, and finally got introduced to um, cryptocurrencies, and uh, that's how I guess I kind of started my my whole investing uh, career. My buddy kept telling me about Bitcoin and everything like that, and he he told me about it when it was like five hundred bucks, and I was like, I didn't even know what it was. And then six months later, he's like, Yo, Bitcoin's at six thousand dollars, and I was like, Okay, like put it on my radar. And um, it, long story short, I finally got invested into uh, Bitcoin, I think I started with like 110 bucks or something and I turned um, $110 into like $1,300 in like a month or something. And I was, um, I was watching Bitcoin fluctuate and I was just like, man, like how, like how can I, how can I catch Bitcoin when it's at like $6,000 and it goes to 8,000 and just cash out like $2,000 a day. And um, so then I got a opportunity from a, a previous mentor of mine and um, he actually introduced me to day trading. And so now I just, um day trade currencies and i mean that's that's pretty much just it for me so 22 years old living in denver colorado right now and um could potentially move into uh las vegas or kansas city here up in the up in the upcoming months very dope uh, man i'd love to live in denver colorado man that is i'm jealous of that you guys must get a lot of skiing done yeah we do see I live, in, I live in the middle of britain which basically means it's raining and it's flat and there's nothing much to do <laughs> over here. 
Apart from kind of watch, watch everyone else have a lot of fun. Matt, I, you know, you're in New York, right? Well, well Ella, where are you at? Whereabouts are you in New York? Sorry. Right outside the city, man. I'm literally 10 minutes from New York City. So um, there's very much so a lot to do. But in regard to uh, the skiing, you know, you got to go upstate for stuff like that around here. Yeah, perfect. So I'm super interested, kind of putting the question to both of you, really. And um, your network of people, I, I find that this is a really like a part of the um i get messages all the time on instagram about who you're hanging out with your network is your net worth um and people seem to have a different opinion on it and you know whether or not it's that big of a deal um because you know some people are from different backgrounds some people don't have the uh kind of opportunities in the beginning that some of us have and you both have very different uh network stories matt obviously you've got some very top level um you know networks you know, Evan, you mentioned that you've got your friend base that kind of introduced you to it. So do you want to give it kind of give me an overview of what you think about your whole network situation? Yeah, I mean, I personally think that, you know, network is uh, extremely important. And I don't want to necessarily give credit to um, my network for getting to me, getting me to where I am right now, you know, today. But if I did not credit them for leveraging or helping me get to where I am, I would be doing a discredit to them. You know, this goes all the way back to when I was 17 years old and I first started my my business in the event industry. I was working with the likes of 50 Cent and Fetty Wap and uh, these hip hop artists. And what came about from that was literally being in proximity of these individuals. Now, I'm, I'm personally very strong on the fact that proximity is power. So, you know, the, the five closest people to you, you do become the sum of, and I'm a really big believer in that. Uh, I've been on both sides of the spectrum where uh, I was hanging around people that I probably shouldn't have been. And, you know, things resulted from that. And, you know, the complete opposite where I've been hanging around with individuals like Damon John and things have been great, you know. So uh, in regard to network, man, it's, it's it's really important for me personally. Yeah, I think you pretty much just nailed it. Um, one of the first things that I was ever taught in entrepreneurship, kind of like you said, like you're the average of the five people that you hang out with every day. And um, I think that's absolutely true, even though like I kind of I kind of fell into entrepreneurship um, by accident just through knocking on doors. My um, my first mentor, Kano Nartetes, actually introduced me to um, a pretty a pretty um, influential person. His name is Kenny Rodriguez. And and just through him, he helped me leverage Instagram. And now I'm meeting, you know, people that I, I probably would have never met throughout my network. And so it's it's having the ability to network through your network. And if you don't have anybody, you know, that's pushing you or making you strive to be better or anything like that, then um, you're just you're just going to be the average of the five people that you hang out with. So I, I'm constantly always trying to um, meet people through Instagram. Like I just got connected to you guys through Instagram. So and now we're on this podcast together. So I think I, I think you definitely hit it on the head, Matt, um, for sure. I think you've got to try and like climb up that, you know, you've always got to be trying to reach out for the, the people that are doing that, doing what you want to do, right? I believe very much in the term, there's a, there's a phrase that we were taught very early on, which is B times do equals have. So you've got to kind of be, in order to have the things that you want, you've got to be the person that that person would be and also do the things that that person would do in order to be able to have those things and kind of like taking from what you both said it's it's saying you know if you're at the beginning stage of your journey and maybe you're very lucky and you've got kind of you know some epic people around you but most of the time you kind of got to just climb that ladder of, of kind of network and understand and try to figure out who's next um in terms of doing of who's done what you want to do um and I honestly i think that, that that has created me some insane situations um i'd love to know about your most nuts uh network stories i'll kind of i'll start one so you kind of know what, what i'm talking about um when i was 18 i was a massive fan of robert kiyosaki so you know rich dad poor dad new york times bestseller forever and i was like i gotta go to this dude's um seminar and it was like four thousand dollars so i was like no chance is that going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm studying law and I've got no money and I didn't even have a business at that point. So I bought a ticket for Jordan Belfort seminar, which was like 50 bucks. So different realm, but still good. Um, and it was real good because the Wolf of Wall Street had just come out and it, we, I, I snuck into the platinum area and got to meet him, which was sick. Um, and 
from that event, I walked straight up to the, the the stage manager and said, look, how do I come and work at the Robert Kiyosaki event? I want to come work. I'll do it free. I'll work, you know, 12 hour days for free. And um, did that, turned up to London, worked three days straight. And at one point, the stage manager didn't turn up. And I was the only person at the front of the stage. So they said, can you do it? And I said, sure. So I grabbed the mic, ended up being Robert Kiyosaki stage manager for a whole weekend, hanging out with him behind the stage and all of the Kim and got to walk them around the whole of London, uh, London's XL on my own, chatting to them for like three hours in total on my own with them. So that all kind of came from understanding that I wanted to get to that level and just basically just doing it and not being scared of having to run on stage, which I did do. And there's a picture of it. It's hilarious running on stage, trying to fix Robert Kiyosaki's mic. And I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I just sat there in front of like 2000 people. Like, wow. So, um, but yeah, led to amazing, amazing kind of network of people. So anyone got any fun? I'm sure Matt, that you've had some interesting stories with the, uh, with Damon down the line. Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, before I even say anything, man, I just want to say, I definitely respect your story. And, uh, <laughs> I, I think that's great. You know, like you definitely put yourself in the position and, you know, like you said, you weren't scared to take action. And when people take action, you know, good things happen, you know, so I definitely respect that. But uh, I think my most crazy or the most impactful networking story I have is exactly how I met Damon. You know, I was one of three students that was at my college that had the opportunity to meet him. And I was in the green room with him. I shook his hand. He looked at me and he said, what the hell do they teach you here? How to break people's hands. So it was kind of like a good vibe off the bat uh -huh. and um you know from there i just looked at him i said damon i'm gonna work for you now he went on stage did his little fireside chat came off stage and i had my mentor there with me the only difference was i was a student and my mentor wasn't my mentor is a couple years older than me and we were sitting at two different areas of the theater so after the event we met up in the middle and we were the last people in the theater except for one gentleman and this one gentleman was walking up the side of the theater heading toward the exit and I looked at my mentor and I said, I, I feel like I know this guy. Where do I know him from? And my mentor said, I know him. We've done parties with him. We've done events with him. And this is how it goes to show that, you know, you know your network is full circle, right? Like I was mm -hmm. just telling you, I started my event industry business at 17. Now, little did I know that I've done a party with this gentleman. The only reason why I didn't know him was because of the age difference. And it just so happened that this gentleman worked for Damon John, nice. just like that. And like, you know, full circle, man, you know, I took action. I spoke with him. Next thing you know, two months later, I'm working for Damon. So uh, crazy stuff. It's crazy. Isn't it? The universe just does weird things when you kind of do this. It just hooks you up with the right, yeah. right situations. Yeah. I think when you put those intentions out there, you know, I like to say like whatever you want wants you back. So, I mean, that's a prime example right there. I don't really have any crazy um, stories or anything like that. I've been to seminars and everything, but it, I haven't really we've got, had we've got to get you some, bro. We've got to get you some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sick. It's um, it's like a. Uh, I, I did. I went through a massive phase of doing all that stuff a few years ago, but I kind of lost touch a little bit. Um, you know, with all the the social media stuff that was out and all these seminars, I found that a lot more was being said than was being done mm -hmm. at these kind of places, which kind of didn't put me in, in, the, in the in the in the major crowd of people um but i'm sure you both agree that a lot more is said than is done at these kind of um seminars so it's, i think that this is the reason why it's really important to kind of have these kind of conversations so that people can see kind of behind the veil a little bit of um what's happening uh before we get onto the crunchy questions um a little bit later on for sure yeah so one of the questions that I actually asked my Instagram um, earlier on this week <laughs> came by one of the one of the guys that came back was a um, young dude from Las Vegas actually and he asked me said I've been doing this thing for like 18 months everyone seems to be making a shit ton of money but I'm not and I said where are you seeing where who's telling this I'm saying well Instagram's telling me this they're driving around nice cars they're driving around in you know Gucci trainers and all this stuff I wanted to get your guys' opinion on how Instagram is affecting our expectations of, of entrepreneurship and what kind of the first couple of years of business is like and whether or not you've got any thoughts or feelings around it. Because I think yeah, it's quite I'm, an interesting subject. 
For sure. I mean, I, I mean, personally, you know, I think Instagram is just a, a human highlight reel. Uh, I feel like we don't necessarily see the bloopers of everyone, but at the same time, I feel like the people that are vulnerable on social media, and I try to be the most vulnerable I could po potentially be on social media to let people resonate with where I'm at and what I'm going through at the moment, you know, but uh, I also wanted to say on that note, like every quote unquote overnight success took 15 years. So anyone that's seeing, you know, the success and things of that nature, it's either rented or, you know, they actually earned it over the course of X amount of time. So in regard to in regard to all of those things, man, I just feel like um, social media could be uh, your own worst enemy is uh, depending on how much time you pay attention to it. You know, if you're. Um, if you just glance at it, put some content out, engage with that content and then dip, I think that's the best thing you could do. Otherwise, you're going to have self-deprecating thoughts and you're going to question yourself and things of that nature. But yeah, man, I, I think it's it's crazy to to see all these highlights and not so many bloopers. Yeah, I 100% um, I agree. I definitely believe that that social media is, you know, like you said, like a highlight reel. And um, I was thinking about this actually the other day. It was just because like, you know, even in even only being two years in entrepreneurship, it's like ninety percent of entrepreneurship is just figuring out problems, and like ten percent mm -hmm. is like having fun, right? Like the the glamorous life that everybody shows, the rented cars, mm -hmm. whatever they paid for them, the popping bottles and stuff like that. And so I definitely, I definitely um, am working to be like more vulnerable and stuff like that. I actually think that I get a better response when I show people. Um, on, on Instagram, you know, like the problems that I'm going through, like, um, for example, like when I was my first venture, when I got into, um, entrepreneurship was, you know, knocking on doors, going door to door. And, um, the company that I was with actually scammed me out of like $13,000. I didn't get a, pay a paycheck from like August to like mid January. And it's like, I don't think a lot of people would like show that, but I'm open about it. Like, I don't, I don't care, but like, that's the side of entrepreneurship. It's the bad partnership. It's the it's the problem that you didn't expect that is going to come up like tomorrow that you, you know, you had plans to do this today, but like, you, you know, you only got this done because you're figuring out 90 other things. And it's, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like spinning plates. And like what a lot of people don't see is, is, you know, the spinning plates aspect to it. They only see like the finished products. So I, I definitely think social media, even I do it sometimes, you know, I hop on social media, like I'll, I'll have a bad day or something like that. And, and I see someone that they just bought a you know new pair of Yeezys or something like that. And I'm like, damn, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like I need to get myself a pair of Yeezys. And then like I step back for a second, I'm like, all right, like that's when I know just you know, just to delete social media. That's what I like to do sometimes is honestly just do um um like a social media hiatus and just go off for like two weeks and just, you know, get back to like just a present moment or or just focus on you know what needs to get done just because it, it's just a distraction i mean i think i've done a good job of of tailoring my social media to um you know always being like educational so i follow like um like wise pages and stuff like that that are putting out just like good content people like matt people like you um so at least when i'm on social media i'm consuming you know good content that they can help me get to the next level but it's like the other pages where where i see people that are at the level that i want to be and then i look at where i'm at and i'm like man like man, like I, I want to be there like right now, you know, but like it, it's, it's keeping in mind that everything is just a process. And so yeah, I, I sure. truly believe that, you know, we're, we're exactly where we need to be in this moment for a reason. Yeah, for sure. I like that. I mean, I have an opinion that with, with the whole money element as well, like the, the, the money that you generate, I think in your twenties, you know, you should be, hell invest in that in anything you possibly can that's to this generating uh long-term compounding returns because your 30s are going to come very very fast like they're going to be here in no time and you're going to be thinking sat there with all these you know you know 50 pairs of gucci trainers thinking oh great now i look like a fool when i'm walking down the street in a gucci pair of gucci trainers and i'm pushing the pushing the pram um you know i probably should have invested that fifteen thousand dollars in something that's now making me you know fifteen hundred dollars a year and pays for the everything else I need to do. So I'm kind of at the mindset where I want to build my, you know, I want, I, I, I'm not going to be that kind of, um, you know, person which says, I don't like materialist things. I want to, I don't want to drive nice cars. You know, that's not important because I think everyone has their own kind of definition of um, what their aspirations are. You know, for me, I do want to be able to travel in style. I do want to be able to do all the cool things and drive the nice cars and, 
et cetera, et cetera. But it's got to be, it's got to be, you know, via income that I'm not having to work for. And until then, I have to try, I'm probably going to look, you know, like I'm not being successful. And that, I think, is the question, is people think that if I'm not doing, if I'm not driving around in this, or I'm not wearing this, then and the world perceives me as not successful, which is just nuts, right? Just absolutely nuts. When in fact, the probable situation is, is that you're far more successful than them, <laughs> you know? And that's what that's what Warren Buffett would say and people like that. And um, Evan, I, you know, I see that your Instagram, like you've got some insane engagement rates. And mm. I like the, I like the um, way that you in, you kind of interact with your followers. I feel like it's very open and very honest and very like direct. Mm -hmm. So how, how did you do that? <laughs> you know, build a, build an engagement like that. Cause I think that's super interesting. Um, dude, I honestly just, it's a, it's a really funny story. So I hopped on, I hopped on a phone call. I was in a network marketing company and, um, I was, I was literally brand new to it. I didn't know what I was doing. I literally had just got introduced to social media marketing. I didn't even know what social media marketing was. I think at the time I had like 400 Instagram followers and, mm -hmm. and like Facebook friends and stuff like that. But so, um, I was talking to this guy and he was telling me that Facebook had an algorithm and I was like, I was like an algorithm. Like, what do you mean? And, um, so he's like, He's like, the more that you like people's posts, the more that you comment on their posts, um, obviously more people are going to, one, see your comments and stuff like that too. But it, you got to think of it as, in terms of a business, right? So you got to think of Facebook as it generates more revenue by doing what? Bringing in more users. Mm -hmm. right? so then they can push out more ads. And then those um, companies that are pushing out ads can bring in um, more revenue for their companies, invest more into ads and everything on Facebook. And so once I started kind of thinking in terms like that, I was like, that makes sense. So um, that's just like literally what I started doing. And then so I was on Instagram one day and I was like, I was like, I wonder if Instagram does the same thing. So what I was doing was, you know, I really just like tailored it down and I didn't know what I was doing. I was kind of just like liking, commenting, following, unfollowing people, um, liking other people's comments, tagging like photos and stuff like that on Instagram and really just trying to just trying to like break out of like the the, um, you know, 400 followers that I was in. And I went from like just by doing that, just being consistent every day. That's the other thing is just being consistent and showing Instagram because the algorithm, the more consistent that you are, the more people that it's going to put you in front of. Mm -hmm. And so the more people you can get in front of, um, in your niche, um, that's the biggest thing is you got to have a niche to start with. So mine's like travel and lifestyle. And, um, so I, I was just liking, you know, travel lifestyle, um, entrepreneur stuff and just hoping that, you know, people would come to my page and be like, Hey, like this, this kid seems like it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, being consistent with stories and stuff like that. So I was able to take um, my Instagram page from like 400 followers to like 1600 in like two weeks, like literally just spending like, like four or five hours a day, just liking like all, like all the, to all the hashtags that I would use, I would click on the hashtags that I use and lock, like the top nine posts. And then mm -hmm. below the top nine posts, I would go and engage with other people. Um, it doesn't really have as much weight if you start liking uh, um, all the posts in your feed and stuff like that. So that's why you got to go to the hashtags. Um, when you post, um, you have more. So all by doing this, being consistent, posting, um, and interacting with your followers and everything like that, um, you have more of a chance to get on the Discover page. And I've actually had a few people hit me up a few times and they're like, dude, look, you're on my Discover page. Like, this is crazy. And um, I, think, I think it's just, um, just gaining traction um, naturally. And so I see... I was interested in, you know, um, I hear, I hear, like, I kept hearing about other people having like bots and stuff like that to grow their Instagram pages. But, you know, people would hit me up. They're like, Hey, we can get you 50,000 followers in two months. And then, you know, I'd look at their engagement rate and they had 80,000 followers, but like 20 likes on their photos. And I was mm -hmm. like, no way do I want that? So, um, actually through Instagram, um, I got connected, you know, kind of coming back to that network question that you were talking about earlier. Um, I found someone who was willing to um, pretty much everything that I was doing just do for me. And so then I could have him, you know, go through like all the photos, comment, follow on, follow and everything like that. So I can solely just focus on the content that I'm putting out, which mm -hmm. just freed up literally like five to six hours of my day because I would, I would wake up in the morning and that's all I would do for the first like two hours, like during breakfast, during lunch, like comment, engage, 
um, post a story, do something like that. Um, and, and just, it was just really just grinding on Instagram. And so now I have someone like running that side of my social media, but now it's to the point where I feel like the content that I'm putting out, um, is, you know, it's kind of just like word of mouth now, you know, like I have people in my DMS telling me, they're like, Hey, like my buddy told me to follow, follow you because like he said that you, you know, you give out like some good wisdom and stuff like that. And so now it's kind of just my Instagram page is just kind of like, word of mouth and i still am running like you know all the hashtags um liking commenting and stuff like that and and the biggest thing is that is a lot of people do it with the intention to get a ton of followers and and likes and stuff like that for no reason um the, this is the other key is it's got to come from a place where it's genuine so i made sure every time when i was commenting or when i do still comment on someone's post that it's always genuine so that like you know, I don't just, you know, throw like three fire, fire emojis or whatever on someone's <laughs> post. <and be> like, <laughs> you know, so I make sure that when I post on, on someone's, on someone's um, photo. So like on your photos, like, I, dude, I like Porsches. And so I'm going to say something like, I'm like, dude, like the, uh, you know, the, the Porsche GT3 RS, man, that's probably like one of the best cars that Porsche has made. Sure. And so like, it's, it's, it's genuine, you know, it's not like I wasn't just like, Oh, look, sick Porsche, dude. And, and like next photo, it's like, I make sure that it's like genuine. And I think, I think that's where a lot of people get lost is in social media is just because it gets it gets to a point where you the intention becomes followers, 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 and not necessarily like being genuine. So I always just try to be the most genuine that I can. And I think just 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 by luck, I guess, um, a lot of people just just found my page just being genuine and stuff like that. Awesome, dude. That's so sick. I think I learned a lot there, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm probably yeah. going to start doing some of that now. Um, Interesting, man. That's 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 really cool. So, I th I, just listening to that, just um, I don't know if you guys are aware of what the uh, what we're doing in this office, but we're kind of running an agency. So we're we're working with a lot of B two B companies, working with a load of um, actually mostly B two B companies now, uh, about twenty percent B two C. So, kind of helping them grow their businesses um, internationally um, and reach people. But the kind of base theory behind our marketing practice is that the more people you have a conversation with the more successful you're going to be so the more people in your target market that you speak to um or touch in any way the more successful that your business will be um and it's interesting to see that being done in on an instagram model too like it's exactly the same and i think you can literally pull it into every single space matt you said that you're going to go speak to you know a ton of audiences this year you know how many of those guys how many people are you talking to in order to reach that many people like i'm sure you're talking to a ton of um potential speaking engagement opportunities oh yeah forget about it man i can't tell you how many emails i send how many phone calls i make on a day-to-day -day basis you know i set a goal to speak 100 times in 2019 and I mean, I'm literally here sending out anywhere from 50 to 100 emails a day. And, you know, when when that lead becomes hot, then I'll be hopping on phone calls. So at the end of the day, like those touches are really, really big, man. Yeah, I think the um, theory, I would recommend this book if you haven't read it, it's Guerrilla Marketing. Uh, I couldn't see it back on your shelf back there, Matt, but I've seen about 10 of those books I've, I've read. Um, there's, nice. some good one. There's, there's some good ones up there um but <laughs> gu guerrilla marketing is a good theory like it, it's quite old school and the dude's quite racist but it's really good content if you can get your head around that so he talks about the um idea that that someone who has no idea who you are so someone who is a suspect so to speak through to a trusted customer trusted follower trusted someone who's going to employ you to do what it is you want to do um, is about 27 times conscious and subconscious so that's why we see most of the advertising nowadays from you know the big brands is like fluffy christmas adverts and like coca-cola vans and stuff like that because they don't need to do any hardcore selling anymore it's just there to just remind you of them and that's called trigger marketing so the idea is that you know they may not be ready to speak to you right now but when they are because you touch them that many times you're in front of their gun and that is the kind of um theory that we instill across marketing it's just so interesting to see it because because evan you're doing the exact same thing with um your school of charts situation right now so you're you're giving out value you're touching people 
I don't know how many bloody stories you put out on Tuesday night, but it was a lot. So, <laughs> so you know, like you're touching people a lot of times and, you know, eventually building trust. And I can see that that thing is kind of taken off and it seems to be, it's just an instillment. So um, it's cool. You know, I think of, you know, as you were talking about that book, I think that's the the book that someone recommended me to get. And um, I, yeah, I guess I just kind of just figured it out on my own. You know, obviously I messed up a lot, but I, I really just worked insanely hard. Like, like I was telling you, just five to six hours, like for probably like eight months straight, just trying to grow this Instagram, man. And I, I, I always wanted to, I heard that, you know, it's, it's, it's having the intention of like the law of reciprocity. So if you give someone something, they feel inclined to give you something back. And so kind of like the Gary V mindset, you know, just keep, just keep pushing out value because you don't need to worry about people like copying. I mean, people will copy you. People are copying me right now, but it doesn't bother me because like only one, oh, like less than 1% of people are probably going to take action on that. So every, every like mindset tip that I post on my story, um, everything that I've, everything that I'm posting on school of charts is like everything, like pretty much from like my ebook stuff that I've learned courses that I paid for, um, like just, just knowledge that I've gained and, and I'm just putting it out on my, on my Instagram because I, my intention is, is, for someone to come to the Instagram page and say, I was like, wow, like, you know, this kid's actually, this kid's actually different, you know, because there's how many, like how many Forex pages are out there that are just trying to, you know, make like a quick buck or whatever. And so I think it's, it's really more just kind of like attraction marketing is, is like, wow, like I've been following this kid for a while and um, you know, I've actually implemented some of the things that he said and it's worked, you know? So now let me like shoot him a DM and then, that also just adds into the Instagram algorithm too. The more people that you can get to like reply to your stories or comment on your photos, it just shows it shows Instagram that you're like you're you're someone that's putting out content that's growing Instagram's platform and Instagram gets more revenue through putting more ads and stuff like that. So it's it's having the mindset of of essentially owning Instagram and how can Instagram make the most money and they reward their influencers with, you know, more engagement, more followers putting them on discover pages, um, putting their stories and all the highlights uh, in like the discover highlights and everything like that. Mm. Interesting. So I think that it's to kind of end this um, segment, I've got a couple more areas I want to touch on with you guys that I think are going to be interesting for the listeners. Um, but to end this segment, the, the reason, this is literally one of the reasons why I wanted you to on this, this, this podcast was because you're both from different areas and, you know, myself included. So we've got three completely separate areas that look, you know, are doing that you can see people working every, everyone is working extremely hard and doing extremely well in these areas. But when you break down the fundamentals, it's exactly the same, right? It's exactly the same. So whatever you're doing it, you know, we talked about the Instagram glorification, Whatever you're doing, you're going to have people in your industry that are doing that. Don't worry about what they're doing because it's just going to drive you nuts. And then two, listen to what Evan said, listen to what Matt said, listen to what we said, and understand that it's just purely talking and touching and giving as much value to as many people as possible. Um, and if you do that, that is literally the algorithm of entrepreneurship, in my opinion, yeah. at an early stage. Before you can get onto the fun stuff like buying businesses and flipping property and all that fun stuff, yeah, which I'm just, sure. starting to, just starting to dabble into now. We just bought a couple of hair salons, which is fun. Nice. Um, so it's um, just raised some capital to do that, and just 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 bought the second one. Um, so just having get getting to play a little bit now. I've been doing a lot of doing a lot of the pain for four or five years, so it's just starting to get a little bit of fun now. But um, try to keep my head down. Because there's a few times we kind of get a little bit sidetracked by the Instagram lifestyle stuff, um, yeah. which is fun. So I've got I've got two more areas, and guys, feel free if you uh, have any more areas you want to talk about. But the two areas that I want to kind of talk about is your pers one is your personal kind of um, work day, and what you would class as a busy work day, because I feel like that is also something that social media tends to like make out that people are working 6 a.m till 10 p.m they don't do anything else because i've tried doing that it doesn't work there's, there's there's a kind of set day that gets you kind of most productive and i'll be really interested from just from my learning as well to understand what you guys would class as a busy day and how you make yourself productive throughout that day sure yeah 
I, I mean, I think every day varies for the most part. Um, and I think that that really just goes back to entrepreneurship, right? You know, the, you're yeah. always going to have to deal with some sort of problem or, or whatever the case is. You know, it's just uh, how do you solve these problems on a day to day basis? But uh, I kind of set limits for myself, you know, because as entrepreneurs, as hustlers, as individuals that are continuously striving for greatness, I feel like a lot of us can um, get ahead of ourselves and, and want the, you know, this ultimate glorious picture. But at the end of the day, you know, the work is still going to be there tomorrow. Right. You're not going to be able to do every single thing that you need to do all in one shot, all in one day. And I think just from a healthy mental state and even a healthy physical state, it's good to have like a cutoff time. And I mean, I could take you through my day. My day starts at 5 a.m. I get myself in the gym right away because I know by the time I finish doing everything I need to do for business, I'm not going to want to be in the gym after that. And I feel like when you're healthy mentally, you're healthy uh, physically, you know, when, when those two combine, that's when you're on your like optimal game, you know, you're, you're optimizing everything. But uh, I'll pretty much hit the laptop at around 9 a.m. and then I'll pretty much close it up around 6 or 6.37, depending on when the family's having dinner, if I'm eating with them and things of that nature. But like I said, man, limits, limits and, you know, putting yourselves on those time restrictions are huge. For sure. Yeah, I think it's um, one of the one of the mindset shifts that I've had actually recently is just keeping things, keeping things simple. And um, that's honestly been able just to um, explode and in being able to sit down and focus on one thing. And it doesn't really even matter for me, at least um, this is. You know, other people can sit down and grind just for 16 hours straight and and uh, just get just make it happen, I guess. But for me, um, I've, I've done that. I've wait, I've woken up at, you know, five. I've done the, you know, wake up at 5 a.m. Um, just start like grinding and stuff like that. Like, especially when I was knocking doors, I was trying to build um, like two businesses at the same time. So I would like I would work from, you know, I'd wake up at 6 a.m., go to the gym, come home, read like, you know, whatever book I was reading, 10 pages um, hour, whatever it was. And then I would go and hit the doors. And uh, so I'd get home and then I, you know, I'd still be doing like the Instagram thing. Um, and then I would, I would try to be like reaching out to other people trying to build a second business. And I, I just found that I was just wearing myself out because I was just, I was just in the mindset of just grind, 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 you know? And so now I'm kind of in the mindset, like I wake up, like for me, like I I've noticed this about myself. I don't really fully wake up until about like nine to 10 a.m. Um, sometimes even like 10 30 11 a.m and some people some people are like that's way too late but i'm that's just the way i'm wired like i like for me like i like going to the gym at the very end of the day because it calms me down i just i just have so much energy that when i go to the gym i'm just dead tired so i pass out and mm -hmm. uh, so when i wake up you know i this is another big thing that i've been doing too is just um putting this down for like mm -hmm. turn this off and i don't even i don't even keep it in my room anymore um i, I leave it downstairs and I don't touch it for the first hour to hour and a half that I wake up. So I wake up, I listen to, um, you know, like a podcast. I read um, one of the books that I'm reading right now. I'm reading a book on leadership. That's um, it's a pretty good book. So I'm enjoying that. And then I wake up, have my coffee, and then I set my intentions for the day. So like, um, I look at, you know, okay, like who do I have to talk to? Um, what do I need to do? And then like, I also, I also give my room, my my day, some room to, for things that are like kind of like unexpected as well too. So if I need to hop on a phone call, you know, like I'll, I'll a lot an hour of time to um, do that. Or if I don't, if, if nothing comes up, then I'll just take that hour just to kind of like reset myself and just like get back in the flow. Cause I mean, once you're in the state of flow and you're working and things are just simple, man, you can just finish one task at a time and just knock them out and just cross them off the list. I just think that that just builds so much momentum in the day to day life. And then in like the week to week and the month to month. And then I really think that's just how you gain traction overall at least that's that's what i've seen um in my in my life is just keeping things simple so i wake up i um you know i, I focus on me for the first hour set my intentions and then i'll open up the laptop i'll open up the charts and everything like that and um especially with trading you have to have a balanced you have to have a balanced mindset because if you're not balanced you're going to be you're going to be um in some trouble yeah for sure super interesting matt how does um one stay concentrated when living in manhattan <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> to keep it real man it's it's not easy you know whether you're walking down the street and you see a pretty woman you know or mm -hmm. you know you're uh you're tempted to go out on a friday night to a one oak or a vip room or one of these places you know it's it's definitely not easy but 
Uh, I think what it comes down to is just building up your discipline muscle. Um, I feel like once you kind of get that out of your system, so now I'm 26 years old, I kind of don't even go out anymore. Yeah. You know, if I, if I do anything like uh, it's very low key, I might go to a cigar lounge or a Soho house or something of that sort. But um, man, it, it's definitely tough, but it comes down to discipline and really just knowing like what you want, you know, like if you want, listen, if you want to go to one Oak, like by all means you can go, like it's available yeah. to you, you know, but um, at the same time you have to know like, sacrifice man sacrifice yeah i think the first few years uh, like you know i think there's another there's another quote isn't there do what others do today what others won't do so that tomorrow you can do what others can't all right exactly so kind of, you know first 10 years but then there's an also there's a flip side to that right so i read this book it was called titan so it's a, the the life of john d rockefeller it's like a 700 page mammoth on just his life it's just the best book i've ever read and i've listened to the audible version as well it's like 38 hours long and it's just so sick and it's like and it just goes through his life of um the first 10 years of his career and he's you know a big bit of an idol to me um from a business perspective and um him working like ridiculous hours and then when he gets to that kind of but i think because and he says that you know in the first five ten years of your career it's kind of like getting that sled moving um, but then what you need to do in the first 10 years is make sure you put in enough things on the sled so that one day it'll move without you because that's when you're actually going to start making some real money and actually when things are going to start to actually happen for you. And he said, I've seen so many men as they would, because they didn't think about women back in the day, but as they, you know, so many men fail in life because they spend so much time working. They don't have any time to think about how they can make more money. Mm. Um, and he, 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 he actually, um, obviously different time but kind of got to the point where he said you know i'm gonna work half a day because the rest of the time i don't know about you guys but in the mornings and in the nights when i'm not on my phone or i've just woken up that's when i have like most of my ideas or when i'm trying to get to sleep and i've shut all the world off and my head's just running with ideas i think that's mm -hmm. just because you're actually getting some time to think i was so overstimulated that you're actually only just getting some time to think in these times so I like the idea of giving yourself some thinking time during the day. Soho House for me is a cool place to go and do some thinking, Matt. There you uh, go. I, I, I love that. I live next to the farm. I live next to the farm one. Um, oh, that's so awesome, man! House, yeah, it's sick. So that is my local gym, and it's it's cool. Uh, it be Soho House. It's like a. Well, how would you describe it? It's like a members club, but like for creatives. Exactly. Yeah. So it's uh, it's essentially what Josh just said, right? It's a membership club. Um, they're very selective with who gets in, especially here in New York City. Like they just don't let anyone in, which is kind of the cool thing. Um, listen, when it comes to network, man, Soho mm -hmm. House. Um, you know, Soho House is what it's called, but there's also a place called Ludlow House and Dumbo House, which are under the same umbrella. And I'm telling you, anytime I've been to any of those places, there are high level individuals yeah. in these spots like it is a place to definitely invest time and money into a hundred percent yeah for sure um quickly then to round that segment up the again the theme throughout this i hope you guys i hope you guys are getting it i hope the listeners are getting it as well is that we all see a lot happening and it can all be traced back to everyone doing the same thing so evan you talked about your day Matt, you talked about your day. My day is very similar. You know, get up, hit up at 6 a.m. Don't do very much work for that first hour and a half. Try and just let the day happen and think and just give myself some education and then get onto it. Um, but I've seen so many times people on Instagram, people on social media saying, you know, what is the right day? You know, they see some people on Instagram posting that they're up at 4.30 a.m. Um, and they think that if they're not doing that, they're not going to be successful, which is just, again, nuts. So the theory behind this, guys, and the reason why I want to talk about it and have, we have been talking about it is to realize that your day's success is completely up to you and you you may be good at getting up at 4.30 a.m. You may actually need to get up at midday, whatever. But getting up at midday and getting up at 4.30 a.m. is not going to make you successful. It's not what makes you successful. What makes you successful is what you do after that. And how you deal with and how you test and measure your own time. You know, some people like Rockefeller and they need to go to work for four hours to build the biggest empire there was. Some people need to go to work for 20 hours, like Gary Vee, to feel like he's on his on his way. Mm -hmm. And 
that's the kind of mindset. So go and test and measure whatever you can. Get up at five. Get up at five o'clock. Get up at two o'clock. Stay up all night. There's loads of things. Read Tim Ferriss's books. He will blow your mind. Matt, I can see you've got some behind you of a uh, million things you can try to make yourself more successful. Um, but you have to kind of try those in order to determine that if something doesn't work, doesn't make doesn't mean you're not successful. Do you guys agree with that? I agree. Yeah, a hundred percent, man. I think everyone what works for everyone is. Uh, unique to them. You know, I was actually just interviewing this chick called Nicole Lapp and she's the um, author of that book called Boss Bitch. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Yeah, Yeah, awesome chick. And, you know, during the interview, she told me that she's vegan. And I said, all right, cool. You know, like, I'm going to try it. You know, she says it works for her. I went, I tried it for a day and I said, holy shit, I need a steak in my life. You know, (laughs) like, so... What works for other people doesn't necessarily work for you. It's like you said, Josh, it's all comes down to, you know, testing the waters and, you know, seeing what works for yourself. Yeah. I'm in mass, mass test and measure phase right now with this Iron Man. Like trying to figure out when the hell I need to do training for that is just, just so much training, man. <laughs> Evan, you live in, you live in like a, a state where everyone does Iron Man's Evan. Uh, you yeah. must see people training like crazy for that stuff all the time. Yeah. We actually have, um, we actually have this, this race is called like the, the ultra marathon oh yeah um, you get you got to run 100 miles in less than like 32 hours or something like that wow and it's like the, it's just and it's 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 not just like a, like flat roads it's in the mountains like across like the rockies like wow. so it's not just like a, just a marathon across like you know denver colorado it's in the rockies you're like running on like these peaks and stuff like that for 100 miles and you have to finish it in like 32 hours if you don't finish it in 32 hours they're like well I guess you you can try again next time, buddy. Like <laughs> it's just bad. <laughs> now I've been seeing that you've been training for the Ironman. Yeah, we could. Um, I wanted I, to do something nuts this year, like crazy. Set myself a challenge. That's wicked. Um, even running a marathon is, is yeah. Doing yeah. the bike is like 140 miles, 26 mile run in like a like a mile, yeah. something like that. It's nuts, yeah. And the idea, the guy, generally the idea behind it is pure test to measure, like right? Because I was spending way too much time last year in the business, just doing like here in this office. Like it's now eight o'clock. This is like the normal day. I was just way too much time, and I kind of said, "Is this?" I said, "Let's do something crazy that's going to force me to spend time out of the office, and let's see if the business still does better." So it's like a trying to break my like. Um, feeling that if i'm not here i'm not gonna be successful so i'm gonna force it i'm just gonna snap it so and it's been really good so i mean we're only we're still five months to go and i've uh I tell you what i'm not gonna be running that race anytime soon i need a few more months of uh, hardcore training first um but yeah it'll be good hopefully yeah. raise some money for charity as well which would be nice epic i mean even the fact that you're just trying it too is just because i've been doing that recently too like every time n- nothing nothing to iron man extent but like every time i go to the gym i think it's building that muscle kind of like matt said it's a disciplined muscle so yeah for sure um you know like i do this like even in my warm-up so like I, i'll notice like the days that like i'm feeling really good and the days that i'm feeling really bad in the days that i'm feeling really bad i just want to like i just want to be like cool like i'm only gonna do a five minute warm-up this time and then like even like when i tell myself that i'm like all right like i gotta go like do it with the full length of my warm up and then just a little bit more too just because like i can't let myself slip up and, yeah. and I think even even when you how you do anything is how you do everything and i think that you know even if you if you start slipping up in your workouts then you're going to start slipping up in your work and i'm really just a full believer that like you just need to go all in and everything like in the present moment so i try to make it a goal of mine to whatever i'm doing right now like you're getting my 100% attention and mm-hmm. And like I'm like if I'm having a conversation, you're getting like the hundred percent best of me. Like I'm gonna give you the best value that I can give. And like um, I think it's really just a mindset. It's just a habit that carries into other things. So like you, like so I can go to bed feeling like I was productive. So even though I may not have done everything that I wanted to do, I'm going to bed knowing that like everything that I did do today, I still gave like a hundred percent. And then it's just taking taking it day by day. It's just. I think that's that's one thing that really gets overlooked as an entrepreneur is because we're we look at the opportunity, we look at what the business could be, we look at you know the marketing plans that we we can invest into our business to to blow it up and stuff like that. But we're not focusing on the stuff that we have right now, you know, and the on the things that you know it's not it's not a game of being the having the most resources. It's a game of being the most resourceful. And you know, me like I 
I have my dad's a firefighter and my mom sold like RV insur- insurance. And like, I literally like, I've like, I'm the underdog essentially. Like I don't have any entrepreneurs in the family. Um, none of my family even went to college or anything like that. Like I'm literally had like zero network to any entrepreneurs at all. And like just in the two years, I mean, kind of getting off on a tangent here, but I'm um, just staying like present in the moment, but I see a lot of entrepreneurs always reaching for the future, but I really think that you build a ton of momentum, like in, in this moment right now. Compound effect. That's what Compound. it is. It's like, that's all it is. Compound effect. Feeling like you, feeling like you, you don't, you're not getting anywhere every single day. Um, Warren Buffett said that he's like, yeah, we just kept our heads down. Didn't really feel like we were doing very much every day. And then we woke up one day and had a $500 billion company. So, <laughs> so like, just, take, just take one step forward. Um, and I mean, guys, I could speak to you guys for hours. And I think that we'd, we'll, we'll listen to the feedback of this and hopefully um, we can get something else organized and, and, and talk more. Um, I know that we're running out a little bit out of time now. Um, so I wanted to wrap up with kind of one more question, which was the kind of wrap up to all of the instant gratification elements of this um conversation and the question is where do you want to where, where are you going to be at 40 years old i want to know i want to know where are you going to be at 40 years old and then we can kind of compare answers yeah that's that's a great question man you know i feel like the the answer to this for me personally changes almost week by week or almost month by month because uh progress i think progress is one of the ultimate forms of motivation or one of the four that's scientifically proven to motivate you is progress 40 years old, man, that's 14 years away, man. I am going to, first and foremost, I'm going to be a father. Uh, I definitely, I'm a family man, you know, at the end of the day, like I want to be married with kids. Um, I, I definitely want to put that out there first. Uh, it would be great to be on Shark Tank. I'll keep it real. I would, oh, I would yeah. love to be the guy on Shark Tank. I think that would be super dope. Uh, I definitely need to be consistently traveling the country, traveling the world, speaking at events and things of that nature, because at the end of the day, that's what fulfills me in life. And I feel like once you're able to find that thing that fulfills you or that thing that gives you that butterfly type feeling as if a girl was giving you butterflies, like if you could find that in your work, I feel like you're successful in itself. So uh, that's going to be something that I'm doing. Uh, listen, man, I'm, I'm all about... Uh, building massive businesses too so whether that's within uh real estate or within marketing and in the content field like that that's all me right there nice love that well you said it on camera now so you have to make it happen oh 100 percent. i always put this out into the world <laughs> sick Ed, what about you that's epic um yeah honestly the the reason that i got into entrepreneurship is because i always want to make sure that my family is taken care of and um so in 40 years I definitely see myself having a family as well too. And um, I would like to have, you know, different houses um, all across the world. So like, you know, I wanna have a house like in Thailand, I wanna have a house in the UK. Um, definitely two houses on like the East Coast and then maybe one like just in like a tropical place like Hawaii or um, I feel like Hawaii is a little bit um, a little overdone sometimes. So maybe somewhere like the French Polynesia, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. So I just, I really see myself getting into real estate and, and teaching people Forex. I don't, I just have such a passion for Forex and and um, I'm obviously not the best Forex trader. I've only been trading for, I think like a year, like to this day. And um, so, you know, as I progress and progress and progress, it's just something that I don't see myself ever stopping. And then just, and, and being able to teach people, you know, like, hey, like this is a skill set that, that you can learn and take the profits and put into some other stuff. So like learn oh, Forex. Cool take the profits and put it into a business that you are passionate about. Use it as like the startup money because in business you, you need money. And so I feel like Forex is, is there's literally no barriers to entry. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's easy. It's not probably one of the hardest things I've ever done to be honest, but I think it's like one of the most rewarding things and, and being able to have the power to, um, you know, possess a skill set where there's no barriers to entry. So, you know, if someone like, I'm thinking about taking this skill set to, um, like I go to church and at my church, we, we broadcast to um, all the inmates and everything like that and like the prisons and everything. So they can still, you know, like watch the sermons and everything like that. And so like, I think it's really fascinating. I want to take the skill set and then introduce it to them and be like, look, like practice on a demo account, like just with paper money, with monopoly money, learn the skill set. And then that way, like, you know, like when you, you know, when you get your chance at freedom, you have like this um, like negative connotation that you're like a bad person, but what you have like the ability to still change your life. And so if you, if you can, you know, you know, once you get out of prison, once you get released, 
you you possess like a, a billion dollar skill set. You can you're literally just a walking ATM. And so like being able to just to hand people a skill set like that where where all the odds are against them and just giving them like just like that sense of hope. And I feel like that's what I want to be doing and when I'm 40 years old is is speaking on stage, um, teaching people about forex and and working really closely with people. And um, my other thing too is um, you know, as we grow the school of charts group, I would like to take yeah. um like free members and just like take them out to like some vacation or something be like yo like we're, we're gonna be out here for two weeks um where you get two weeks of access to me and we're gonna have a good time and and uh, we're gonna like learn forex and stuff like that and just hopefully you just start just like a ripple effect and everything so 40 years i'm definitely gonna be invest investing in real estate teaching people forex and still just trading forex on my own yeah. i was gonna say that i was like i'm gonna put a, put a statement on this video that in uh in, in inside the next two years evan's going to be investing in property and real estate and other things like that because it's kind of like a standard uh hardcore assets once you get your your fingers on some keys it'll change your life honestly yeah. it's it's a great it's a great element so um i think for me it, it's it's just gonna be buying businesses I just want to be buying businesses i want to be sat in an office that's cool hopefully look overlooking central park um and yeah. just be buying cool businesses that i would like to own for a long long time um and then hope all the fun stuff that comes with that so um again just listening to you both and understanding that i think everyone is has their own kind of goals and i literally have zeroed out that you know if everyone gets their heads down and kind of just does what they we talked about on this day which is talk to as many people as possible and um you know invest do whatever it takes you know get up make sure your day is measured properly um and take small steps every day then you're going to be you're going to be set on those goals and i don't think it's that complicated to be honest with you <laughs> i think don't think it's that complicated so um guys i want to thank you so much for coming on with me i hope you enjoyed speaking to me today absolutely, absolutely man uh, love a second yeah. to this again well, matt it's a pleasure love this yeah. pleasure was all mine man i'm definitely grateful for the opportunity so thank you both yeah no worries well so uh that's um well, I'll come and chat to you guys in a second, but um, thanks for you guys that have been viewing. If you haven't uh, given us a subscription, make sure you do that. Make sure you check out Evan and Matt on Instagram. Their Instagrams are in the description, um, and we will love your feedback so that we can organize something like this again, um, hopefully with a load of questions as well. So thanks a lot.